So it's no great surprise that VMware have just released uh, Fusion version 6, hot on the heels of Parallels Desktop 9. There seems to be a, a form of uh, arms race going on in the desktop virtualization space. Uh, if you track the updates, for example, to Fusion as well as to Parallels, they, they certainly seem to come out in very close comparison to each other. So let's have a look at the same um, sort of build that we did on Parallels Desktop 9. We'll build a Windows 8 machine and look at some of the uh, performance elements and see what it's like. Uh, we can also look at some of the new integration features. So, so let's start with building our Windows 8 machine. So I'm going to fire up Fusion. There we go. We're going to do a new machine, which is there. So we have the wizard. Now what's interesting, if we pop under more options, we can see that we can build a virtual machine from the OS X recovery partition, which I think is quite cool. Um, you can also import a, an existing machine or, or set up boot camp. But what we're going to do in this particular instance is install from a disk image. So we'll hit continue there. I'm going to select my disk image. The one that I want, I'm going to find Windows 8. There we go. We're going to go for the 64-bit version, which is that one. Okay. I'm going to use easy install. I'm going to give it a random password. And I'm going to paste in my Windows product key there. So hopefully this should just go away and install everything without me having interact, to interact with it. Immediately you'll notice that, for example, on Parallels, I don't have to enter my product key. I don't have to enter pretty much anything. It will just set everything up. Uh, and then later I have to go on and activate my machine. So let's click continue. Uh, we, I'm going to set it up as very isolated because I want it as its own virtual machine. Okay, I'm also going to customize the settings. You can see the default settings there. 60 gig hard drive, 2 gig of RAM. Um, and what I'm going to do is just hit customize. I'm going to save it on my SSD. And what I'm going to do is just change the processor. I'm going to give it all eight cores and some more memory as well. There we go. There's various options in here. Uh, they seem very similar. Uh, we can run through isolations, a new one, for example. Okay, so let's fire it up. We'll let it build and we'll see how long it takes. And there we go, it's done. So uh, let's pop into full screen. There we go. And uh, what we'll do, we'll have a look at some of the uh, performance elements. So here we are with our Windows 8 machine. By the joys of video editing, you can see that I've installed a number of applications, mainly the Office applications and Visio and maybe Project, I think. So let's start off looking at uh, the Windows Experience Index. There we go. You can see it's showing a 6.4, which is a pretty healthy score. Let's compare it to um, the performance index we've got in Parallels, which is in this dock here. There we go. You can see you. I was getting a 6.5 in Parallels. Um, that's with the same uh, configuration. Let's have a look at that. You'll see that there's four cores allocated to this machine, uh, even though it's showing eight in here. It's four cores, but with hyper-threading enabled and with four gig enabled, four gig of RAM. Uh, it's currently stored on a SATA 3 SSD, so a, a Samsung 500 gig SSD, and it's running on a late 2011 MacBook Pro, so it's the quad-core i7 at 2.4 gig. So the Parallels machine is showing a slightly faster um, kind of statistic there but the thing I'll add is that for the first time ever I found that the VMware Fusion for office based apps is starting to feel a little bit snappier than the equivalent of Parallels so to give you an idea personally I tend to use VMware Fusion for all my server based virtualization a couple of reasons for that I found historically that it scales better I can get far more um, guests on my laptop than I could with Parallels 
also I found transitioning some of my server stuff into VMware ESX, for example, was far easier from VMware, um, indeed actually possible from VMware. Um, but what I found with uh, desktop based stuff, I, I found that my office applications I preferred in a parallels environment. I found it snappier, I found the integration um, a little bit nicer, but version six of VMware is starting to make me question that. Uh, all of a sudden, the office or the desk based uh, integration seems to be there. So let, let's fire up some applications. There's Excel, we'll fire up Word, for example. There's our Visio, there's our PowerPoint. It's very, very fast, it's very usable. Um, it certainly feels as fast, mm. if not just as snappy as Parallels Desktop 9. So let's have a look at some of the other functions and features, things like um, suspending machines and also mm. our start and restart times. So let's start with our suspension. I tend to suspend my machines rather than actually shutting them down. Um, so what we can do is pop up into the VMware menu up the top, virtual machine, machine we'll select suspend. There we go. I will say that the suspension and also when I fire up the machine, I will say that Parallels does feel faster in this piece and also looking at um, doing things like snapshotting, it certainly feels a lot quicker in Parallels. And there we go, our machine's ready. Conversely, things like um, shutdown and startup times, this is where it starts to even out. Uh, Fusion feels quite quick. So what we'll do is we'll shut this machine down. shut down very very quick so let's find the machine up again started so again everything switches back to parallels a little bit because the startup times in parallels certainly seem quicker so it's a bit difficult to come to any real conclusion as to which feels faster because um, I'm gonna run some benchmarks as well which I'll, I'll put in a different article but right now my feel is that um, operationally fusion feels a bit quick quicker than parallels but there are elements that certainly feel a lot slower in fusion and those things are startup uh, times feel a lot slower in fusion and also things like taking snapshots so let's let's look at the snapshot piece for example what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a snapshot of this machine there we go now that appears to be done, but if we pop across into the desktop view, what you'll see is that on the dock, the snapshot is still happening. So let's wait for that to finish. Okay, and that snapshot's finally finished. Now, as you can see, that took quite a while to run. Now, I, I, I'm not convinced that that's correct. I, I think it might be down to my setup. I'm running, for example, um, Preview six of Mavericks. Um, my my 
snapshot seems to have taken three or four times longer than it did on the previous version of VMware. Now, I'm just to be clear, right, I think that issue might be because of the amount of beta software that I'm running. Uh, but I'll, I'll do some investigation over the next few days just to see what that's about. So let's have a look at restoring a snapshot. So before we do that, let's make a couple of changes. Let's change my desktop background, for example. Let's go for that one. I'll pop into mail and maybe remove our mail profile. So now, for example, when I start up Outlook, it should ask me to configure a mail account or a profile account. So what we'll do is let's restore that snapshot and we'll see how long that takes. So we'll pop into snapshots, restore snapshot. We're not gonna save this environment. Let's restore it, see how long it takes. So the restoration time is actually pretty quick. The restoration time is very comparable to uh, to what I saw in parallels, but um, yeah, I've, I've got some concerns about the, the amount of time it takes to take a snapshot because I use that, that function an awful lot. But like I say, um, I'll investigate that a bit more because I, I suspect it may be down to my setup. So summing up is a little bit difficult. Um, there are a number of positives, but there's also a couple of negatives and also um, there's some elements that are delivered in Parallels that you just don't get with Fusion. So for example, in Parallels 9, you get the option to uh, use the Windows 7 look and feel. That doesn't appear to be in, in Fusion 6. Um, if you wanted, for example, to get rid of the modern UI, that one, we would have to go off and install uh, the Start 8 by Stardock, for example, whereas that becomes comes wrapped in with uh, Parallels 9. Um, I've spotted a couple issues around, for example, the um, taking and restoring of snapshots. They certainly seem a little bit slow, but like I said earlier, I suspect that may be an issue with my system rather than a general one. So I'll do some research on that and see what the state of play is. Um, so what is it as a product? Is it worth my 30 to 50 blurts to upgrade? Again, I'm not convinced. It's like Parallels and Fusion are in some kind of arms race to, to try and release new versions. And uh, I'm lacking a compelling reason to want to pay to upgrade from either Parallels 8 to Parallels 9 or from VMware Fusion 5 to VMware Fusion 6. I, I can't see the killer feature in either of them. So I'll keep an eye on that and uh, hopefully maybe revisit it in a few weeks and uh, see if anything's changed once uh, more information's come to light. So the only other thing I wanted to maybe have a quick look at was the idea of building a, an OS X machine from uh, the recovery partition. So let's suspend this machine um, and what we'll do is we'll have a look at building that OS X machine and just see roughly what it looks like. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set up a new machine. There we go. I'm going to pop into more options and I'm going to install OS 10 from the recovery partition. There we go. I'm going to choose the recovery partition. It didn't really give me a choice, so I'm guessing that it saw that I only had one. We'll leave it as OS 10 10.9 and I will put it on the SSD. Under there. To make it reasonable I'm just going to customize the settings I'm going to pop into the processors memory whack up the cores to my maximum give it a bit more memory let's give it eight gigabytes for example there we go I'm gonna fire it up and let it build 
So here we are with our 10.9 dev preview uh, running in Fusion 6. I would just like to point out it took nearly three hours to build from the recovery partition, which is a ridiculous amount of time. So I would suggest if you, while the feature's there to build from a recovery, it's probably not the best way of doing it. It may be better to do it straight from the download and the ESD image. So let's have a look at the general performance. What we'll do is just pop it into full screen. As you can see, it's not as fluid as a Windows machine, but to be fair, it is a developer preview. And also, I think this is actually uh, preview four. There's a number of ones beyond this. So let's fire up Activity Monitor. There's all our information. Okay, also we can have a look about this Mac as well. You can see we're running 10.9, four gig of RAM allocated. So let's have a look in more info. There we go. All right, so we can also, let, let's have a look at the system report. So it does work. Um, you see the model identifier comes up correctly as VMware. Um, it is usable. It's not as fluid as a Windows machine, but of course it is in dev preview. So I don't think we can really moan about that too much. So let's fire up some, some apps. We'll have a look at Word, for example. There we go, maybe Excel. There we go, so it certainly works. Uh, it's absolutely usable for testing. Um, but as you can see, moving things around like the windows there, it just doesn't feel as fluid as uh, as an equivalent Windows host. But, you know, that could be just because it's part of uh, the dev preview. So we'll pop it out into a single window. So what's the conclusion about Fusion 6? Well, it's very similar to my conclusion about Parallels 9. I just can't see a compelling reason that would make me want to spend money on upgrading from from 5 to 6. There doesn't seem to be anything particularly new in there. VMware 5, for example, works just as well on Mavericks uh, as 6 appears to. Um, same with Parallels 9. It works you know, on, on Mavericks for Parallels 8 as well. So don't get me wrong, though. It's a great, solid virtualization platform. So if you don't have one, you won't be disappointed with the product. My Reluctance is purely around the upgrade cost from five to six. I just don't see a compelling reason to do it.